Well, greetings subscribers. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the vlog. Um, I know it's been a while. Well, I was hoping to miss the wind and weather today, uh, working on the vehicles, but uh, I guess that's not going to happen. Uh, nonetheless, I've got on my hip hop pants and um, yeah, because of their dismal performance uh, in the playoffs, uh, I decided to dirty up my Titans shirt. So anyway, uh, well, this is going to be a video for the Xterra mini series uh, because yeah, uh, been having a few problems uh, with the vehicle. Uh, horrible gas mileage, uh, high idle, um, yeah, which comes and goes almost like a vacuum leak, but uh, not quite. And then uh, random cylinder misfires, which those are almost impossible to chase down on a Nissan. Uh, but finally, uh, I'm getting a P131, which is the air fuel sensor bank one uh sensor one on the passenger side so uh, yeah when i did the cats uh i kept the original o2 sensor so uh and they've been fine for what now two two more years um but you know i i give them the benefit of the doubt i'm at 264,000 miles so uh i <laughs> I think they've done their job. So uh, anyway, I bought uh, I bought the whole set of everything. Uh, you can go online, and uh, there's some places that have uh, kind of like a Chinese knockoff. You can get all all four, but uh, I went pretty much kind of OEM on these. Uh, so the the Denso uh, doesn't appear there's a difference between uh, Bank One, Bank Two, uh, Sensor One, Sensor Two, uh, Pre Cat. Uh, so those are these uh, Denso. Um, these are part two, three, four, nine, zero, three, eight. That's the air fuel. Um, they're about a hundred bucks, so they're pretty expensive. Um, and again, those are pre-cat, so these are usually the ones that are giving you the problem. And then um, uh, I picked up the um, Bosch uh, Air Fuel or O2. Those are after the cat, and uh, since I'm under there, I'm just going to replace them anyway. Uh, same thing; they're about a hundred bucks. And uh, I think the one on the left-hand side is one three eight nine seven. One on the right-hand side, one six five one three. So uh, you know, there, there, there you go on the actual part numbers so again uh, it's getting pretty windy so I'm not sure how much of it I'm going to vlog but uh, we'll see uh, I hope with those other kind of flexible inner fender liners I'm gonna be able to do both of the front bank sensors uh, without having to pull the wheel off or do anything just kind of move it out of the way and uh, get in there and change it out and then while I'm underneath I wanted to inspect uh, like the rest of the exhaust and, and everything anyway uh, so I'll just pop those in those are gonna be probably pretty quick and easy so anyway uh, as always um, hope you enjoy the video stay tuned all right I got the front wheel off so good time for a little inspection as well um, brake pads still look uh, pretty meaty rotors looking good uh, and just to point out these are the factory rotors <laughs> uh, I have not had to replace those I got a hundred and fifty thousand miles out of the original brake pads I put the exact same ones on from Nissan and uh, I just I don't know I mean maybe downshifting engine braking and stuff has uh, helped that a little bit but uh, everything else looks pretty good unfortunately it looks like i'm gonna have to take this liner out um as you can see uh from my previous videos i took out those heat shields and i wrapped all the exhaust but uh the plug you want to get at is right there i mean you can see it and the o2 sensor is right there uh, or the air fuel sensor that's pre-cat so <clears throat> those are kind of readily available Looks like that clip's uh, bad. Uh, everything else looks pretty good. Um, these bushings are still okay. Uh, these ones are starting to split, so it looks like I'm gonna have to do the front end here uh, soon, but um, all this looks good. Uh, sway bar, yeah, looks like uh, some of that. These are still fine. Um, shock ones, yeah, they're... Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's probably a little bit of the noise I'm hearing. So again, uh, factory shocks uh they have not been replaced either so um yeah not too too bad um i mean everything else looks 
pretty good. Yeah, these are getting uh, pretty split. And then um, next probably on the channel is going to be the power steering. So I have to, well, when I get the liner off, I'm going to look at that. As you can see, you can uh, see some of the fluid. And I believe that is uh, from the hose, not the power steering pump itself. So I know that's a common thing, but I'm going to have to look at it first before I start ordering parts. But, uh, all right, well, anyway, um, stay tuned and uh, we'll see how this goes. All right, got the liner off. That's pretty simple. Um, and I like those new liners, man. They're so flexible. So you can see uh, pretty straightforward, easy access. Uh, this is the front uh, sensor one, bank one. And right here is the plug. So uh, some people have said, you know, that's kind of tough to get at, but again, it's right there. Um, it's one of your crank position sensors. Uh, I thought this was kind of cool. I don't remember seeing that before. This hose drips down onto the tray. Uh, that's like the condensation. Um, yeah, that's kind of neat. Uh, and then, you know, your typical other stuff that you always question, like, uh, you know, these um, main electrical connectors. Like, really? I mean, that's kind of face right there. I know you got the liner, but uh, yeah, you would think that would get soaked, but, um, you know. If you were running with the liners off. Anyway, and uh, back to that power steering pump issue. Um, you can see up here, um, you remember my last video where we were getting at this uh, <laughs> alternator through this area. Um, you know, it's quite possible I put a lot of strain on these hoses and, uh, you know, got them leaking. But I think just on the surface, um, it would look like I mean unless some stuff I mean it's possible some stuff is running from up here down here but I mean if you look at this pool of liquid right here at this you know crimp connector um, yeah I, I think it might be coming from here so hopefully uh, probably yeah we'll just have to see I mean maybe the first thing I'll do is maybe replace this uh, which sucks because and you got this uh, connector over to here with this little kind of banjo fitting. Yeah, so, yeah, I think I looked at that hose and it's pretty expensive. And then I know it runs over to the other side to the rack. And if the steering rack is what's leaking, uh, I thought I read online, you got to replace like the whole thing. So hopefully that's not the case. Because the, the pump is still working. I mean, I'm losing fluid, but if I fill it back up, um, you know, and obviously stop leaks not doing anything. So anyway, well, won't spend more time on that. We'll get back to uh, the problem at hand. And I also saw on the uh, on my little Actron scanner, uh, instead of the 131, I was now getting the 171. So uh, I had already hit these things, uh, you know, the wire with some cleaner just to see, you know, if it was uh, just a short on electrical connection and it's not so that's why I went this route so um, and it's not too expensive so we'll just replace them and hopefully that's gonna do the job and then I could see the other one back there that's the O2 after the cat so uh, uh, if you go back on my previous videos too there's the uh, cats that I replaced so um, there you go and Whatever I did with the parts. Oh, so I'm going to try either uh, this one because at the time I bought both. <laughs> uh, there's one O2. Um, but this one was like, it wasn't working. I, I don't know. It was like uh, this thing was flexing or doing something. So uh, this one, these kind actually seem to have provided a lot more uh, torque for some reason. I put this on there, man. It just popped right off. So, so we'll see how that one goes. Anyway. Stay tuned. All right, well, <clears throat> that actually came out a lot easier than I thought, because uh, I thought I was going to have to fight with this little clip. But uh, I took a small little screwdriver, uh, just pressed this little tab right here in the back. Uh, be careful, you know, you don't want to break it. But, uh, and yeah, just slid right out. Uh, also, uh, put my little angled uh, O2 sensor wrench on there, and that thing just loosened right up as well. So. Um, yeah, a lot easier than I thought. And uh, here's good, good comparison. There's your, uh, there's your new one. Uh, got the threads covered up because you got to put some like anti seize on it. Um, they included a little pack. Uh, looks pretty nice. Uh, cables, nice little rubberized cover. 
plug is the same, little four pin, uh, so go right in pretty easily. And then um, here's the old one. <laughs> yeah, it looks a little scorched. I mean, these are tough to tell, like just on the surface, what the problem is. But uh, yeah, again, 263 or 4,000 miles. Um, yeah, I should have probably replaced them when I did the cats, but it's all good. Anyway, let's get this finished up. All right, there you go. Um, that actually went in really nice. And there's the new AF sensor. And the only thing I'd really recommend on, on that is um, I would put this in first. That way you don't get the cable all twisted up. Um, just get that in place, get it locked down, and uh, and then plug your cable in. So we're going to, uh, probably while the car's up, <clears throat> I'm going to do a, going to rotate the tires on this side. Uh, I'm going to probably just clear the codes and let this run and see if that clears. Then um, I'm going to check out this one in the back. And like I said, I'm going to replace that one anyway, uh, just because I have them. And uh, then I'll get around to the other side. I was just trying to do some stuff before the car got like superheated <laughs> and everything was like too hot to work on. But I'm glad that plug was right there because I thought it was the one that was uh, up there or it was up here because I was trying to trace it down from from up above to see if I could get at it just with the hood open. That's what I was hoping and I didn't have to pull the tire and pull the wheel well and all that stuff. But um, it's okay. It's all good. Anyway, uh, we'll wrap this up, see if the code's gone and uh, take it from there. So thanks. What in the wide, wide world of sports is going on here? Uh, me think somebody was trying to steal my cats. Uh, I'm not sure how long ago that was because it's kind of rusted over a little bit, but you can clearly see what looks to be like sawzall blades. Um, so I didn't see any marks on the other side, but yeah, there's definitely, I mean, look, you can see like a couple here where, you know, they touched the blade and then they tried to start sawing through and I don't know, somebody... Somebody caught them, somebody saw them or something, and they stopped, but uh, yeah, great. All right, so check engine light off. Um, it's just letting the idle come down, see where it rests. Uh, that was one of the biggest signs is driving around, um, engine light would come on, and then the idle would just uh, vary. I mean, most of the time it was up at a thousand or fifteen hundred so uh, it was burning a lot of gas um, I think it dropped to about thirteen and a half gallons per mile which was not good uh, and it would just not sit at like you know 750 or 650 where it should be so I'm gonna let it sit here for a little bit and uh, see how it is I'll get the tire back on uh, well I'm gonna swap the tires around and rotate them on that side and uh, yeah go take it for a test drive and make sure that it stays where it's supposed to so uh, a quick easy fix I would say maybe between all of that uh, 15 minutes <laughs> so uh, if, if I mean if you're having the same problem and you're worried about doing the uh, at least the AF the air fuel sensor the pre cat ones uh, don't be I mean it is it is pretty quick I think the biggest issue would be is if you buy the OEM the Densos uh, I think they were 109 uh, a piece so they're, they're you know they're a little costly and also uh, the back O2 sensors if you get the um, I think Bosch was the OEM one and they were like 188 and um, like 160 something like that so uh, so I mean if you replace all of them yeah it's a four or five hundred dollar job but uh, you know I want to get uh, another two hundred and sixty six thousand out of this thing I want to I want to flip that to a million miles so uh, never getting rid of this truck thanks all right this is just a little bonus footage for you since I'm down past the cat working on these back O2 sensors and uh, yeah I'll tell you even with a uh, I'd say a breaker bar or my like <laughs> 200 pound torque wrench that one was tough to break loose but uh, on the backside passenger that's like bank one 
um, well, the, the AF sensors, bank one, sensor one, this would be 021, again, on the passenger side. Uh, those are the ones with the blue clip. And uh, yeah, once I got the 02 to break loose, um, the easiest way to get this off is undo this little screw here with this clamp, um, because you ha have to pop the tab to get the connector off of this and then you can reach the other part of the back connector to get that plug out but again uh, passenger side that's the blue one without any uh, cable holder or, or little nipple to plug in that's the green one that's on the driver side so I'm gonna go do that one next again this took uh, even trying to break this loose like five minutes I mean I only have this side of the car up so I was gonna do it anyway and also I wanted to inspect the rest of the exhaust but uh, I'm glad I did it because uh, look at the condition of this thing uh, I don't know if you can see it okay um, yeah I mean it's pretty scorched and uh, the design on those Bosch is a little different so you're not getting everything just coming in on one side of the O2 so uh, although I was not getting a code for this uh, I'm under here I've got it I'm replacing it anyway so I hope that helps somebody out well to my surprise the driver's side is even easier um, right there's the connector and right there is your air fuel sensor so this should be about five minutes um, yeah you still got to take the tire off and pull the fender liner but uh, that's okay I'll take it all right, slight small correction. That little clip is a pain in the butt. Uh, I took a small screwdriver, kind of went around the perimeter of it just to loosen it up, but uh, that other little clip uh, that I was kind of pressing on, um, yeah, it didn't really do much. And it's got this little pressure clip in the back, so it's it's actually easier when you remove it from that that hanger bracket, and then you got a little bit of space. But between this, peering, this steering power rack uh, and all of this stuff that's very sharp yeah not so fun but <laughs> um, and then this was uh, actually not too bad it popped right off too so I, I think those aren't as bad since I replaced the cat so I've had them off uh, at some point you know 50,000 60,000 miles ago whatever it was but anyway I just wanted to show you this uh, look at that oh man toasty but you know at the same time that's kind of how they're supposed to look considering what they're doing but uh, be nice having brand new ones in all right all done on this side um, yeah I like this little uh, rubber coated cable that they have um, that's kind of nice but there you go new air fuel installed and now we're gonna get down underneath and try to mess with that other one um, yeah the uh, O2 with the green clip yeah, that's uh, that's got a weird hanger on it. So I mean, I can see it right there, and I saw it when I was down underneath. But um, yeah, we're gonna have to play around, play around with that one. That one might take a little bit. So uh, nonetheless, I'm gonna get the uh, fender liner back on and uh, just check a bunch of the other stuff. I mean, this side looks like it's in really good shape. Um, brake pads, good. Rotors, good. Um, most of everything else looks pretty good. Actually, this side looks a lot better than um, the other side for some reason. And a little bit of tire rub there. U-turns and stuff. All right, well, uh, yeah, unless I run into something funny, I'll probably just end this video here, uh, or this little extra part of the video, and uh, probably do the next one on the power steering pump hose or whatever the actual problem is so all right hey who doesn't like more bonus material so um this is the driver side o2 sensor and uh, like i said it was kind of pretty straightforward uh, the only problem is um really trying to get at the connector so this is the o2 sensor and i'll show you one of the problems i had with that was um you know i'm using this wrench and once you get that in there, uh, just to show you. once you get that in a place, um, I was trying to use the same extension I used before, but the problem is trying to get that on there. Uh, you don't have clearance on the on this pipe, so I had to go with you know something. Uh, let me try to get this. I had to go with something longer, uh, so that way I could put this here 
and actually rest it up against the pipe give me some leverage but um, you know that usually ends up in that <laughs> busted knuckles on this stupid thing but figured uh, it actually came out pretty easily all things considered it didn't take much to break it loose so now uh, this is the other bracket so on, on that O2 sensor it had a smaller bracket for this cable and it was actually easy to pop that off with one screw um, then you had both hands to be able to kind of wiggle that connector loose this one you really don't have room to get back there and get that free and then like get a screwdriver in there or something to break it loose so kind of the same principle if you take this bracket off um, and take the O2 out you got a little more wiggle room to get both hands on it so um, the only problem I found with that is I got this first screw off and now this back one you know you don't have room to get a socket in there so I got a box wrench with a little swivel on it um, so I'm gonna try to get that in there and um, yeah and like I said I got I got this thing kind of finger tight now so you can pull it out and yeah look at the get a condition of that yeah, and that's what they're supposed to look like but uh, yeah I don't I don't know and I didn't like too this was all twisted up so I think probably when I had the transmission worked on and they had to drop the cats stuff they probably you know twisted that might have been one of the problems uh, but I wasn't getting a short before so anyway well I'm gonna work on this and try to drop this down and see if I got a little more room to play around with that connector and if so yeah, it should just slap right back into place and it'll be done. That'll be all four of them replaced. And they look good. Look at that. Nice and shiny. Nice and shiny. And I don't know if you can see that one. Nice and shiny, wherever it is. But... Oh, yeah. I was right. <laughs> look how much, how much better that is. And, uh, yep, that's the green connector with the little uh, tab to hold it into... Um, this little this little spot right here which you could zip tie it to but yeah that makes it uh, a lot easier a lot more room to get at those clips so all right consider this done <laughs>